The head of Russia's space agency warned that new sanctions imposed on his country could have dire consequences for NASA's James Webb Space Telescope. Could this lead to catastrophic incidents in outer space? And how will this affect our planet Earth? Earlier, Dmitry Rogozin let it be known that he was prepared to crash the International Space Station to Earth, he said in several angry tweets. Russia and the United States are the major partners in the space program, which also includes Canada, Japan, and multiple European nations. And they are on the verge of the biggest war ever seen in the history of our humankind. Welcome to Space News Unfold. Don't forget to smash that like and subscribe button and stay till the end of this video, because in this video, I'll explain to you why Russia could see NASA's James Webb Space Telescope as a target and continues the war in the stars, so let's talk about it. Russia invaded Ukraine in a series of thousand military attacks. The action has drawn international condemnation, as well as new economic sanctions, which U.S. President Joe Biden said would degrade Russia's space program. NASA, however, told Space.com earlier this month that civil cooperation between the U.S. and Russia in space will continue, particularly with regard to the ISS. But in recent news, Russia has said that there is a possibility to start a war in space with the United States and destroy the ISS. Could this make NASA's James Webb Space Telescope a target for the Russians? Rogozin struck a much different tone that no one could have expected suggesting that the new sanctions could potentially result in the ISS crashing to Earth in an uncontrolled fashion and destroying the most successful telescope James Webb. The Russian segment of the ISS is responsible for guidance, navigation, and control for the entire complex, according to the European Space Agency. And the Russian Progress cargo craft provide periodic orbit-raising boosts for the ISS to ensure that it doesn't sink too low into Earth's atmosphere. Rogozin's tweets accused the United States of already limiting exchanges between Russian cosmonauts and their international counterparts, and said that further activity could irrevocably break the ISS agreement, which could lead to the first attack on the USA from space. Pointing to Russia's controlling function on the ISS and the James Webb telescope, Rogozin said Biden is out of the loop and is unaware that it is due to the Russian systems that the space station can dodge dangerous conjunctions with space junk. What will happen if Russia launches a strike on NASA's James Webb Space Telescope? Let me know in the comments down below. According to many generals in the space military, that scenario could affect the whole planet Earth in a situation that there is no coming back from it, to be truthful, it could lead to nuclear war in the whole world. Rogozin said the space junk comes from the United States' talented businessmen. He didn't said names, but that's likely a reference to SpaceX founder and CEO Elon Musk, whose company is building a huge satellite internet constellation called Starlink. SpaceX has already launched more than 2,000 Starlink satellites and could eventually deliver about 40,000 of the craft to orbit. Rogozin, however, did not mention a November incident in which a Russian anti-satellite test generated a cloud of orbital debris that threatened the crew of the ISS, forcing them to shelter in place. That test drew criticism from space debris watchers about the risk posed to the station and its crew, which also includes Russian cosmonauts. Rogozin also stressed that the ISS would deorbit naturally without periodic reboots courtesy of Progress freighters. The space station's roughly 250-mile high orbit causes it to collide with some particles of Earth's atmosphere, which drags the complex down slowly over time. Just days ago, however, a Cygnus spacecraft built by aerospace company Northrop Grumman arrived at the ISS with a mandate to perform the program's first operational reboost, which may eventually transfer this capability to U.S. vehicles as well. Nonetheless, Rogozin raised the specter of the space station going down prematurely, pointing out that its orbital inclination of 51.6 degrees does not take the complex over Russia. If you don't withdraw the sanctions against us, we will destroy the ISS, which will fall from an unguided deorbit to impact on the territory of the U.S., Rogozin wrote. There's an impact of 500-ton construction. Many researchers think that if the ISS will fall into Earth, it will fall in the U.S. or China. Where do you think the ISS will fall if the Russians destroy it? Let me know in the comments down below. The blustery Rogozin is well known in the space community for a 2014 threat during a different geopolitical spat also involving Ukraine, in which he suggested that American astronauts should go to space by trampoline, instead of using Russia's Soyuz spacecraft. At the time, Russia was the sole provider of crewed trips to the space station, 
NASA retired its space shuttle fleet in 2011, and U.S. commercial crew vehicles, such as SpaceX's Dragon capsule, were still in development. His comments recently were similarly colorful. For example, Rogazin suggested that the people planning sanctions may be suffering from Alzheimer's disease, that decision-makers are unaware that Russian rockets are the most reliable ones in this world, and that the U.S. is seeking to block their access to radiation-hardened microelectronics designed for use in space. It's also not the first time Rogazin has spoken about sanctions in recent years. The trampoline comment was made in response to news of new sanctions, for example. And in 2021, the U.S. had a different set of restrictions planned due to what American officials described as Russian-led cyber attacks and election interference, a claim Russia denied at the time according to media reports. At the time, Rogazin threatened to pull Russia from the ISS by 2025, unless the sanctions were revoked. In recent news, Rogazin said that he will attack planet Earth, by using the ISS as a kind of missile that could also be used to crash into the new James Webb Space Telescope, which shocked the astronomers at NASA. Rogazin's latest comments came mere months after Russia integrated a major expansion to the ISS. However, the long-awaited NACA science module launched to the ISS in July, also inducing a spacecraft emergency due to an unplanned thruster firing that the space station's partners resolved rapidly. And in November, the Prickle docking module came to the ISS without incident, expanding the number of docking ports on the Russian side. There still is little chance that Russia will attack the James Webb telescope and the ISS, and even start a war in space with the United States space military, but it isn't very likely. For example, the International Space Station's thrusters and guidance are still controlled by the Zvezda, and even if the Russians could not knock the station out of the sky, cosmonauts could put it into a spin that would effectively disable it, preventing the ISS solar panels from getting a proper fix on the sun. Or if Russia attacks the James Webb telescope, there is still time for NASA to launch a defense system to stop that attack. In the end, no one is really sure how this situation will continue, but it looks like the war will stop most likely. Verts, who was aboard the station in 2015, during fighting between pro-Russian and pro-Ukrainian forces in the Donbass region of Ukraine, simply doesn't see such a scenario unfolding. Given the professionalism typical of astronauts and cosmonauts alike. At the time, I said, hey guys, politics is politics. And that's not why we're here, he says. For this crew, I'm sure they're being very professional and working together. This is a major event on Earth. One of the crew's nations is attacking a free democracy and so there's tension, I'm sure, but I'm also sure that they're handling it professionally and trying to focus on their mission. As for whether countermanding orders ever would come up from the ground, directing the Russian cosmonauts to disable the station, while the Americans and Europeans were told to maintain it, setting off a verbal and perhaps physical confrontation among the crew members to seize control of the station? Vertz does not rule it out, but does not care to contemplate it either. That would be a nightmare scenario, he says. That would be an absolute disaster. You don't want that conflict spilling over into space. I don't think that's going to happen. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to smash that like and subscribe button. And I will see you in the next Space News Unfold.